what is going on Gunas and Gunares? I hope you guys are doing well. It is Arsenal versus Brentford. It's a game that all of you guys have ticked on your calendar because of what happened last year. Mikel Arteta, by the way, we'll have to start with saying congratulations to him because he was the Premier League manager of the month of August. Arsenal won all five fixtures in August, scoring 13 goals and conceding just four in the process. So well done to him. But Mikel Arteta, very humble when he received the award. He went on to thank his coaching staff. Then he made it all about the players, which goes into what we've already seen in Amazon Prime's All or Nothing series, where he takes that approach of him being the shield and allowing others around him to thrive. It's very selfless. It's not all about him. And that's what I love about him in the role. He makes it that he empowers others around him. And that's what allows the youngest team in the league in Arsenal to thrive. So the Gunners suffered their first defeat to Manchester United in the last game, even though they outplayed them. There was lessons to be learnt there, getting beaten on a counter-attack, but it ended Arsenal's perfect start to the season. And although they have since dispatched Zurich in the Europa League, Arsenal actually haven't played a game in nine days leading into Sunday. So they've been given a much-needed break. So, for obvious reasons, I think that's kind of a bonus. And one is because they were able to nurse some injuries like Thomas Partey. Others is to give much needed rest to players like Saka. Thank you very much. Now Arteta will know how important it could prove to get a result here. A loss would disrupt that wonderful start of the season. Because you know a lot of people like myself didn't think that we were going to go to Old Trafford and get three points. But this game has a lot to prove for us because... Fixtures are going to pile up. This is going to be the busiest period leading into the month of October, which will feature a cracking nine matches in 31 days. That's a game every three to four days. So the whole squad needs to sit up, get their act together, and get the results and put in a performance after performance after performance, as well as the boss putting in some much needed refreshing rotation. All it means for you guys is we're going to see a lot more Tomiyatsu. We're going to see a lot more of Rob Holden, Matt Turner, Sambi. We're going to see more of the front players as well waiting in the wings like Niketia and Fabio Vieira. And of course, everybody's been waiting to see Marquinhos get some minutes in the Premier League. Now, Brentford are actually inside the top half of the league after making it three games unbeaten with a 5-2 win after Leeds last time out. Now they've already taken out a big top six team in this campaign by humiliating Man United and I'm on YouTube watching the videos of United fans going crazy in that game you know just because of what happened to us when we went up to Old Trafford so it's just one of those things that makes me feel a little bit more happy after the result but for Arsenal they have a number of injury doubts heading to the trip. Thomas Partey, though, as I talked about over the last few weeks, um, with that slight strain in the groin, he's returned to training, as I said he would, on Tuesday with the fire injury, and he could feature um, even more than now. I think it's probably going to happen that we're going to see Partey on the field because Shinchenko, at this point in time, has been ruled out. Now, that's not saying that he might not play, as Arteta talked about in his conference. But for now, I can't see him playing in this game. Rhys Nelson is still out. El Nene with a hamstring and ML Smith-Rowe with a groin. We're not going to see any of those guys take part. For Brentford, Sergio Canos has shaken off a thigh injury in time for this game with Arsenal on Sunday. And Christian Norgard, he remains out of action. He's carrying a shin injury. So I don't think he's going to be back for that. But... Ethan Pinnock, who made 101's Premier League Team of the Year last season, um, he's back in training after knee trouble, but I, again, I, I think it's going to be too soon for him to actually play, which is great news for us. Now, Mikel Arteta hit out at uh, Ben White's lack of England call-up to the England squad, and personally, I don't even know why Arteta would be bothered. It's nice for your players to have those international accolades, but then... In terms of them 
playing so many games like Saka and getting injured. It's just something that managers don't want. So this is kind of contradictory. A lot of managers are not fans of their players taking long weeks away, long flights as well, jet lagged, having a chance of injury, not resting players. You know, managers are not really a fan of that. They like their players to be rested. And here's Mikel Arteta saying Ben White should be a part of the England squad. So you know what, that's just him giving his boy praise. Now, this will be a tough test for Arsenal and the way Brentford have played, you feel like they can get something out of this game. But Arsenal have something to prove that their style of football is one of the best in the league. And it's going into this game last season with nine players out due to injuries and COVID, having no help from the league, which later, coming towards Christmas, the league started helping other teams. They will be going into this with a chip on their shoulder because of what happened when they went here last season. Now, the Gunners have gone 23 Premier League matches without a draw. In that time, 16 wins and just 7 losses. It's the longest ongoing run in the Premier League so far. And uh, it's crazy, isn't it, that you go 23 games and you don't even have a draw. Like, there's no share of the points with Arsenal. And in many ways, that's actually a bonus and a benefit because one win is catered to three draws. When you talk about all the teams around us, you know, Liverpool, United, uh, City, Spurs, they draw with Chelsea, as we know. Arsenal just continue to pick up three points, which jumps them higher than a one-point gain. So I think that it does tell you a lot about the team, especially when they go behind. Twice they've gone behind this season and they've been able to come back and take the three points. So it just goes to show you how resilient Arsenal are. But Gabriel Jesus has had more touches in the opposition box, which is 66, and attempted more dribbles, which is 34, and also won more fouls, which is 21 fouls, than any player in the Premier League this season. And all this does, guys, is shows how much of a handful he is for defences in the league. For Arsenal, I think they're going to go with Ramsdale. I think White's going to be fit and ready, so it's going to be Ben White, Saliba, Gabriel, Tierney. I don't think that uh, Zinchenko is going to play. And then Lokonga and Xhaka in the midfield. I think Partey's going to be resting for this one. We're going to have Saka, Odegaard, Martinelli, and then Jesus. So let me know what your thoughts are, guys. The game is scheduled for 12 o'clock. It was actually going to be a 2 o'clock kickoff originally. And then it's going to be on Sky Sports' main event. But you can follow the game with us giving match day commentary here at 101. So listen, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. And let me know what your prediction is. All the best, man. Peace out, guys.